and my fear. I would do it, Dan. I know what I got on my own. I'm a child. Firstly, can we rescue a genuine water or a little bit of a cagara or a mosser love mondo? Rebarish combat in Nahone Wangapi. Love Mondo Mutukana of our home scene. Um, our opponent's field. Um, well, a lot of people know Love Mondo is a boxer. Um, but there's more to love more. Uh, and you need to really read my book. Yeah, you know more about love more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, apart from that, you know, I've, you know, like I said, Love Mo is a young man from, um, you know, Messina, mm -hmm. you know, who went on to become a world boxing champion, mm -hmm. uh, a lawyer, and an author, uh, an Australian Hall of Fame in that team. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. Mm -hmm. Well, um, when did you first um, realize that you were a writer? I, I always had it in me, you know, I, 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 I think, you know, when I was still at school, mm. you know, uh, I always had an interest in reading books and writing, um, but, um, you know, you know, my book, uh, Tough Enough, it's more, it, it's an autobiography, mm -hmm. so it's, it's more about myself, mm. me sharing my life journey, you know, with other people, you know, it, 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 it's an inspirational book, you know, it's, um, it's me telling people how I got where I am today mm -hmm. and uh, trying to encourage, you know, other people that, you know, you should never give up in life, you know, and that life is full of challenges, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, there, there, there's a lot of hurdles you need to overcome in life. And, uh, you know, just because you have you had one or two setbacks doesn't mean, you know, you shouldn't pursue your career, you know. Uh, so it's a very much motivational book, and, and I'm hoping it's going to inspire a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, what motivates you? What is it that kept you going when, when you were writing your book? Like I said, again, it was more, you know, you know, I just wanted to share my story. And I was just hoping, you know, it might, it might you know, inspire other people. Mm -hmm. you know, in particular, you know, my South African people, you know, if, if you think about where we come from, you know, what we went through, you know, the, you know I mean, we experienced a lot of atrocities, you know communicating against our family members, our friends, during our pride times. And some people just gave up on life because of that. Mm. So the, one of the reasons I wrote the book is, you know, I just don't want people to, to, to give up in life. And, and you know, <laughs> again, you're talking about apartheid. You know, um, apartheid was bad. I mean, um, you know, I, I don't condone it at all. But at the same token, you know, we, we can't just live life blaming everything on apartheid mm -hmm. you know, um, the way i see you know the, the way i look at it you know apartheid is a problem of the whole world you know uh, just because it's not legislated you know doesn't mean that it doesn't exist you know uh, as far as i'm concerned you know if if, if you taught someone you know from excelling because of their skin color uh you know their gender or their sexual preference mm -hmm. you know, that's a form of apartheid you know if you say i don't like working with you know the vendor speaking people yeah but no you know, i don't like working with this, this guy because you know he's from the vendor tribe <laughs> but he's never done anything wrong by you mm. that's a form of apartheid mm. you see i don't want to work with that person because they're gay but they've never done anything wrong by you that's mm -hmm. apartheid mm -hmm. so you know we, we can't really blame after on apartheid we need to really start moving on and and I, I believe my story goes to show people that you know Despite what we went through, you know, we can still, you know, um, excel, you know, and I believe, you know, we need African people, all we just need, you know, we, we are hard working people in general, all we just need is equal opportunities, you know, if we're given an equal opportunity, we can always work hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you said that you are a lawyer, a boxer, and now you are a writer, how do you manage your time? <laughs> Look, I think we, we really can, you know, it's all about, you know, uh, you gotta set a time table, time table in everything you do. Yeah. You know, you, you just gotta make time for everything. You know, it's, a, it's just a matter of sacrificing. You know, uh, the time you spend at a party, you could be using the time, you know, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, starting or doing something, you know, mm. uh, creative, you know, it's just a matter of managing your time, but it can be done. You know, nothing is impossible as long as you work hard. You know, and remember, I always tell people, you know, um, we all have dreams in life, you know. Uh, how often do you hear people saying, oh, when I grow up, I want to be a doctor, you know, mm. I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a pilot. But it's only those who work hard towards their dreams, you know, who work hard towards achieving their dream, you know, who make their dream come true. Mm. You know, if you don't work towards your dream, your dream is always going to remain a dream. You know, to make it a reality, you got to work towards it. Mm -hmm. you got to work hard. Mm -hmm. Well, um, while you, we are talking now, yeah, um, there could be somebody that's um, listening, somebody who is a writer, uh, maybe somebody who is um, uh, 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 um, not taking his writing um, um, very seriously. What can you say to that person? What can I say to people about what? About, about writing? Yes. Say that again, so you're breaking up a little bit. I'm saying that there could be somebody out there um, who's also a writer like you, but um, they are struggling in some way. How? Can, what can you say to them? Ah, look, I, you know, it, it's a challenge. Everything in life is a challenge. You know, nothing comes easy. You just have to keep working hard, you know. Mm. Just keep writing that book, you know. Uh, just keep, sometimes you might feel, you know, like, you know, you're running out of ideas. But, you know, just keep thinking about it. Give yourself a break. You know, right again. Mm. You know, uh, I think in my case it was a lot easier because it's an autobiography. So I was write, writing more about myself. Mm. But again, you know, the only problem with that is, um, you know, I had to relive some of the things that, you know, that, um, you know, I experienced, you know, uh, growing up, you know, and like some of the atrocities, you know, that, um, you know, I witnessed. So I had to relive that. But in a way, I found that, you know, um, uh, it kind of helped me, you know, it, um, you know, because sometimes, you know, um, you know how they say, you know, if you fear something, you gotta get up and face up to it. Mm. You know, so I've, I've experienced some things that, you know, that gave me nightmares, you know, but I found that, you know, from writing, I was able to relive that life and, and, and overcome, you know, the nightmares, you know, uh, so it's not easy, but it can be done. Everything is possible in life. Mm -hmm. um, well, what do you want to achieve with this book? Again, like I said, you know, um, it, it's more about, you know, uh, I, I'm hoping it's going to motivate someone. I'm hoping it's going to inspire someone and make someone realize, you know what, you know, anything is possible in this world, you know, as long as you work hard, as long as you're dedicated, you know, if you put your heart and soul in anything, you know, you will achieve it. Mm -hmm. now, that's the message I want to send out there. You know, in particular to the young, you know, to the young kids that are, you know, that are coming up. Mm. You know, um, I want everybody to know it doesn't matter where you come from. You know, you know, and it doesn't matter, you know, whether you know you, you had a, a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, for as long as you work hard, you know, you are still going to achieve you mm -hmm. know, what you want, mm -hmm. you know, what you want to achieve in life. You know, it's just a matter of working hard. And that's the main message that I, I want to send out there. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Well, um, when will the book be launched and when will it be available for the public? The book is getting launched on the 23rd, so next week. Mm. It, it's going to be available in all stores. Uh, and one of the things I'm doing, you know, because of uh, the current situation in South Africa, you know, with their... Um, the riots and the looting that are going on. Yeah. Um, I've spoken to my publishers. And, you know, for every book that you know people buy, mm. you're gonna you know, donate you know, a percentage of it. You know, towards rebuilding South Africa. Mm. You know, there, there's a lot of people who lost you know their businesses due to the looting. Yeah. So you know, this is the way to help them you know, rebuild their businesses. And if they, when they do rebuild their businesses, you know, mm -hmm. you know, people will be able to get their jobs back. You know, those who lost their jobs. So that that's a way to try and you know rebuild the economy of South Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a picture what's happening at the moment, in particular at a time like this. You know, when um, the economy needs a revival. You know, in, in particular, you know, during this you know our COVID nineteen pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, and also you know when when I'm you know online. I would like to, you know, to, to um, you know, send a message out there to all South Africans. 
you know, please, you know, stop the looting. You know, I urge everybody to stop it. You know, I understand people are frustrated, mm. you know, because the whole thing, if you look at it, it's got nothing to do, you know, with um, with the free Zuma campaign. Mm. You know, it just became, you know, it turned chaotic and, uh, and the looting has got nothing to do with, with it. You know, it's just people frustrated. And people are frustrated by a government that has failed them, you know, for over 26 years. You know, and, and the problem we, 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 you know, South Africa is facing is, you know, South Africa is currently being run, you know, by a party, by a party that, that is um, divided. The ANC, you know, is divided. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's failing people. But, you know, I can understand why people are getting frustrated. But at the same token, there's no need, you know, to destroy your economy and destroy your country. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what the South African need what the South African need at the moment is a new party, mm. a party, you know, uh, a party for the people, a part, party, you know, that will stand for the people and create, you know, and, and, and provide them, you know, with, the, with the opportunities. Mm. You know, my story, my story goes to prove that, you know, with opportunity, with equal opportunities, Africans, you know, can achieve anything. Mm. You know, I had to move abroad mm. to a different country, you know, to, to you know, to get to get an equal opportunity. And look where I am today. Because I was provided with equal opportunity, you know, I was able to educate myself. You know, I was able to pursue my boxing career. Mm. You know, today I hold seven university degrees. Mm. I mean, you know, anyone can do it. Mm. As long as, you know, you're provided with, you know, the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, with these few minutes that's left, what can you say to the listeners of Makari FM? Well, my people, again, like I said, you know, I'm also pleased to hear that, you know, the looting hasn't been happening in uh, in Limpopo. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really proud of the Limpopo people. You know, it goes to show you, you know, that, you know, uh, we are good people, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, and I hope, you know, um, other provinces can learn from the Limpopo people. You know, um, but again, you know, the most important thing I want to say to South Africans, you know, or to the people from Limpopo is keep working hard, mm. you know. I remember years back, you know, when nobody really thought highly of people from Limpopo. You know, we were right at the bottom. <laughs> but look where we are today. Yeah. You know, we are kind of leading. Mm. We've got a president who comes, you know, from the Limpopo region. Mm. You know, we've got most of, you know, most music, you know, talented musicians coming in Limpopo. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I was just saying, you know, um, you know, I, I was going on about, you know, how, you know, back in the day we used to be at the bottom, mm. but now, you know, um, we, you know, we're right at the top. You know, we, you know, we, we just proving to everybody that it doesn't really matter how, mm. you know, which, you know, um, province you come from, as long as you work hard, you know, you know, you, you know, you always achieve what you want to achieve. Mm. So I encourage, you know from Limpopo to continue working hard. Yeah. Continue making us proud. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm saying that you can also tell our listeners that you're calling us all the way from Australia. Oh, okay. Right. Because yeah. Australia. Yeah. Australia. yeah. Australia. Do tell them. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, uh, thank you so much for your time, love, Mo, and uh, uh, I hope that we'll talk again next time. Okay. Ah, the, 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 before you start, I'm going to talk about the fact that we're going to go to Australia. We're going to go to Australia. We're going to go to Australia. Okay. We're going to go to Australia. All right. I'm going to go to the love more. I'm going to go to the love more. I'm going to go to the love more.